Fixy. Fixy. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's been a while since we've done an E90 video in general because it's all been F80 stuff. So, if you guys haven't noticed the diesel, ta da, ta da, it's blue. It's uh, been through two different colors so far, or one different color. It used to be black, gold, whatever, from Vinyl Frog. But after having it for a little bit, didn't like the color. So now we have blue to match Le Mans blue ish. It's more like an Interlagos blue. But this is also Vinyl Frog. Color looks very, very good on this car, I think. Um, we're actually not done with the wrapping. The front end is wrapped, the rear end is wrapped, but besides that, we just still need to finish the sides and that's gonna be later on. But in today's video, we're gonna show you, I guess, three different options of headlights. And the first option is what you got, this. So most E90s are gonna have this. It's a proven fact. This is actually off of a 328 LCI, and this is a Xenon, or not Xenon, this is a halogen. Most of the time you're gonna get Xenon cars, but they're gonna have the same type of lens, this. Faded, it can't really be repaired. Well, I'm not gonna say it can't can be repaired and I did repair it once on this car and the results weren't that great. The reason being is you sand this down, you do all that stuff and you polish it. it. Turns out okay but the clarity is not there because not it's not a fresh lens. So we already went through that stage. We're not going to go through that stage again because I don't like how it looks against blue. So that's where this comes. So this is a replacement lens from eBay. To do this job is really pain in the ass. It takes about three to four hours to get this whole thing off, cleaned on the inside. And also if you wanted to modify the insides like this, takes a long time. Plus the paint gotta dry. When you do take these apart, you are guaranteed to crack the edges or damage the edges and things like that. Like this, there's a damaged edge, but it's all sealed because I have a bunch of weather stripping on there. Same thing here. It's all just gonna become kind of a pasta, but you can get it to seal properly and function properly. But if you're doing this the first time, it's not going to be a fun time. Uh, another thing with the OEM headlights is also the wires. The wires on the inside can get damaged because they are like very brittle. So over time, if you have high mileage headlights or high mileage car in general, the wires on the inside are going to be flaking off, which is going to cause some issues with Low beam, high beam, and your angel eyes. Maybe the turn signals. So, <clears throat> that is another thing that you have to consider before taking this apart and doing all that extra stuff. So, you can go from this into this. <clears throat> the light output is very good on the Xenons versus halogen. Halogen is absolute trash, I think. However, I don't think it's a it's as bright as these headlights which i'll show you in a little bit uh also the angel eyes when you replace the bulbs one of the angel eyes is also always brighter than the other one you can purchase lux uh angel eyes and i think those are kind of equal but still not as good so the third option is this plug and play you don't have to do anything there's no modules, no nothing. The only thing you have to do is plug it in and it works. Uh, 
these compared to this already have a black housing on the inside you have way bigger uh angel eyes or drls in this case one here one here uh the only con i would say is probably this chrome here but you can't really tell because the chrome is going to reflect whatever is on the outside so it's not really noticeable here and you also have a turning signal all the way across here um, the light output on these i think is actually brighter than the xenons which i'm surprised because the first headlights i did on my wagon they were bright but they weren't as bright if you guys want to see that video i'll link it down below we did get a lot of views and everybody had questions about everything so this video should cover most of it if you can't get it with this video then i don't know but i will cover the coating part the install part or install for the most part and everything that you need to know as far as these headlights um, as far as compatibility they work on xenon and halogen i believe and they work on pre-LCI and LCI. Um, this car currently has these, because this is the first thing I tried to see how it looked. And actually it looks really good because like I said, the inside is blacked out. The only thing I left chrome is the side marker or the turn signal, but everything else is the same. And the only thing that's changed as far as lighting goes is the angel eyes to aftermarket leds but otherwise this is just bone stock that came with the car the car only had 60 64,000 miles so the wires on the inside were good that's why i chose to do this option for most people going from this to this i would not recommend it because it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience which if you don't have it Go with this. You buy it, shipping is free, and you just put it on, install it. You connect the your Carly or Beamer, or whatever coding software, code out some things, and you're ready to go. So now I'll show you what these look like. There's no point in me showing you this because you already know what the light put output is going to be. Trash. So I'll show, you, I'll show you guys what this looks like on the car. We have that side connected and then we'll go ahead and install this and show you that. I thought, you know, the rear tail lights were kind of boring as far as factory ones. So we had, we went ahead and upgraded the rears as well. Um, these are made by the same company that makes the aftermarket front headlights. Um, there's three different options you can get. I think it's like clear or clear ish and you can get factory red and you can also get these these are like smoked ish but not really like crazy smoked so the difference between these is you have three stripes here versus oem oem is only two stripes and it's usually not as bright as this as far as the daytime running lights all right so to install wise this is how your factory headlight would look like Mount here, mount here, T30, T30. You also have a T30 down here. You have to either jack it up. If you're not lowered, then you just have to loosen your fender liner. Obviously, you still have to loosen the fender liner to get to. There's one, two bolt for the bumper. So the bumper has bolts here. You have bolts up here. There's four up here. And if you have an under tray, obviously you have to release the under tray there's eight mil bolts underneath and depending on your car you're gonna have a fog light twist that off take that off and if you have headlight washing system that's another thing you have to pull it up and remove the headlight washing cap i don't have a headlight washing cap in mind because obviously the car is getting wrapped and it's just not installed yet but if you do you have to pull up release it and then let it go so that's that. Uh, besides that, 
The bumper should come off after your release. Top, sides, and underneath. I'm not gonna go over this, because there's 10,000 videos of how to take off your foam bumper. After you take it off, like I said, this, this, there's two bolts here, and there's a bolt here. So in total, you have five. Five bolts, after that, you have to kind of wiggle it out. If you have the headlight washing option, you have to remove the hose off of it. If you don't, don't worry about it. And the headlight washing system makes it kind of pain in the ass to remove it out of the this area. If your car is wrapped, I would definitely watch this corner and this corner because you can damage it by removing it, like forcing it out. Once you get it off, there's a plug in the back. Disconnect the plug. And you have the headlight out. Like so. Obviously, I broke my headlight washing system. Who cares? I don't care about it because I'm not going to use it. And, uh,. One thing I forgot, if you have PDC, you also have to disconnect your PDC sensors. Mine are turned off, so that's why I'm not worried about it. This is a headlight plug on this side. There's another one on that side. So that's this is the only thing that's gonna keep your headlight from coming out after you remove everything. So I'm gonna do the reverse of what I just said, and I'll show you guys what we'll look like. Okay, so we're back. Um, the bumper is like eh, kind of on, not really, not yet, because we are missing a headlight on that side, the final headlight. So this is what you get with plug and play. I don't know. I just gotta say, this kind of looks, this kind of looks saucy already. So like I said, this is not fully on. Everything is still loose. But the blue accents do match the car very well. One, two, just the design of the headlight actually looks, in my opinion, actually looks better than that. Even though that looks pretty dope. I think this looks 10 times better and looks more aggressive on the car. And shut the fuck up, God damn it! There's fucking people next door, I swear to God. Anyways. We're gonna turn the headlights on. Damn, bro, is that a G chassis BMW? Bro, it looks so good. That's a G chassis? Me, like you. Ah, oh, that's a bad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's the fucking top strip at? I don't know. Daytime riding lights? <laughs> Way brighter than that. Way brighter than that. Way brighter than that. It looks so good. Well, we have symmetrical brightness here. That's E90X is bright in the center, clapped on the outside. That's what I've been saying. I was like, so this is symmetrical. That is actually like, you don't even need to have your projectors on. You light up the floor with that. That's well, bright. You do have projectors on. Oh. oh, that is brighter than that <laughs> for sure. And most people are like, oh, aftermarket is not as bright. No. My ass. No. No. This is bright. Well, those are also LED. Yes. Versus neon. And xenon, xenon, xenon not neon, xenon. And you actually have a projector on the inner headlight as well. Unlike that one, that's a halogen. This is it. Hey, come here. This is it. Let's ask the OEM Plus. This is it. Let's ask the OEM Plus guy. I is him. Yeah, you like OEM shit. I, I do like OEM shit. So I did a similar upgrade on the E60 M5. OEM for you. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> There's certain upgrades I can't do. This is pretty passable. This is pretty passable. And it's tough for me to say stuff like that. And no, I'm not, I'm not being biased because I sell the damn headlights. Looks good. And if you look at it, he's probably already talked about this, but it matches that, that blue. 
Woo! Oh, and as you guys saw, the blue doesn't light up, so you don't have any issues with the cops. It's just, it's just there. It's just there, it doesn't light up. It doesn't light up. And this is, I think, the, is the third revision of the same headlights that I used on my wagon, which I will leave a link down below. You can see that video. Those headlights were not bright. Well, they were bright, but they're not as bright as these. These are actually bright and you don't have to put uh, bulbs in them. They already come with the bulb. I would say the high beam, eh, kind of questionable. But everything else, perfect. That should look good. And it's not done yet. Once it's done, we're gonna show you guys the full shebang. Just for a light presentation. That's pretty bright. Right as hell. <laughs> well, that's not even adjusted yet. High beams. God damn. God. <laughs> Just saying. That's pretty bright. And we haven't adjusted the high beams. So, that is. DRL's on. Everything is off. It looks, I'd say, really aggressive. That's how the headlights look. They're obviously not wiped down, but you get the point. The only thing that's left now is to code the headlights as far as all the um, errors and things like that. So we'll do that next. And this, by the way, is what the turn signal looks like. It's the strip on top. It turns amber. You have the side. And then obviously the back. Both sides, the same thing. And this is with the brights. I mean, the low beams on, the RLs, and with fog lights. I'm not sure why on camera it looks like they're jittering, but they're definitely not in person. Everything is really, really bright. All right, guys. So everything is buttoned up as far as the lights go um, and the taillights. So I tried to code the car with this guy, Carly. Um, and I got most of the codes, uh, cleared, I guess, or taken care of, but we still have, um, faults for the adaptive headlights, which Carly can't really code that out. So I'm going to have to contact my coder that I use for most of our cars and have them code the warning which I'll show you right now. So right there, that symbol usually means that the, let me turn it off. That symbol usually means that the step controller or step motor for the adaptive headlights is not responding, which obviously it's not because the car doesn't have adaptive headlights anymore. So we do have to code that out. But besides that, everything else is coded.